Good morning. Good morning. Is it on? Okay. Welcome to worship at and with Trinity Lutheran Church, a reconciling in Christ congregation that welcomes all of God's children to form a community of faith that works for racial equity and economic justice and honors the full spectrum of gender, gender identity, and sexual orientation. Let me be the first to wish you a happy new year because the first Sunday in the season of Advent is the first day in a new year in the life of the church. A new year invites changes, brace yourselves. Over the next four weeks, we're gonna make some changes to how we receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. You can still stay in your places to receive the sacrament you just need one of those little white paper bags that contain a communion kit that you will use. Those who want to come forward for communion will either take a communion kit from that little table or they will receive a piece of bread from me which they will then take and dip into <coughs> wine or juice before consuming. And I'll explain all that in a little more detail a little later. Everyone is welcome to receive communion today. You don't need to be a member of this church or of any church if you want to come to God's table. If you're watching our live stream, you are invited to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion when you see it being received here in the sanctuary. The Advent issue of our church newsletter has been published. You can pick up a printed copy today or you can ask to receive it by email. There are a few ways to tell us you're here for worship. We have laptops and tablets scattered around the place where you can check in. You can aim your smartphone at the QR code on the back page of the bulletin. And I think there are still clipboards in every pew that you can write something on. All of these methods allow you to request regular emails from the church about our activities and events. If you want to have someone mentioned in this morning's prayers, just go to the table at the back of the middle aisle and write their name on one of the post-it notes there. Those notes will be collected before we offer today's prayers of the people. We continue to collect coats, jackets, sweaters, sweatshirts, and such for distribution to our vulnerable neighbors. Please just bring those in whenever you raid your closet or hit a thrift store. Every Wednesday at 9, a group from the congregation gathers for breakfast at the Copper Kitchen on Central Avenue at 56th Street South. On Wednesdays at 11.30, we offer a free hot meal to the community, and we always need volunteers to help. Talk to Jerry about that ministry. Our online class on prayer will meet on Wednesday at both 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., and this week we'll be looking at the Psalms as a guide to our personal prayers. Our food pantry is open on Friday mornings and we need volunteers there at nine. Talk to Lynn about that ministry. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? This congregation can't exist without the generous financial gifts of our worshipers. There's an offering plate out in the narthex, the entrance area of the church, where you can put donations. There's also a QR code in the middle of the bulletin that you can use to make a contribution on our website. This week, we wish a happy birthday to Vicki Skidmore, Faith Dunn, Martha Head, and Jeff Spencer, as well as a happy anniversary to Faith and Peter Dunn. Is anybody else celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week? Then we're only singing to, yes, yes, wait. <laughs> birthday or anniversary? Birthday. What's your name? Bob Hayman. Happy birthday, Bob. Happy birthday to all of you. Happy anniversary to some of you. And in this new season of Advent, we're also going to be singing some new music during worship. The choir and I will lead you through most of it today when it occurs. 
but we did want to take a moment to introduce the music that I believe is on the bottom of page nine of your bulletin, The Lamb of God. We want to teach that to you today so you can sing it boldly when that moment comes in the service. How are we going to do this? Are we just going to sing it? Sorry? give you a reason to come back next week. Every week we'll practice a different bit of the music, but we're throwing all of it in today. So just hold on tight and go for the ride and enjoy yourselves. And now I invite you to silence all electronic devices and quiet your heart and mind in preparation for worship.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we light the first candle on our Advent wreath, we think about our hopes and our dreams for the well-being of the world. In Old Testament times, people often placed their hope in the king or queen that ruled in the city of Jerusalem. He or she was both the political and the religious leader of the nation. Today's psalm is a prayer sung by pilgrims as they made their way to the holy city for a religious festival. It celebrates the justice that they could receive from the ruler's throne. When rulers failed to offer that justice, they were often rebuked by the prophets. Today's reading from Isaiah looks to a future when God will rule over the city. All the nations of the earth will come together to receive guidance and instruction and to have their disputes settled by God. In New Testament times, people's hopes were centered on Jesus and on a promised day when he would return to establish God's rule over the earth. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul <laughs> The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up swords, against nation Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself to which the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David.
May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and companions, I pray for your prosperity because of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek to do licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, instead put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Born as a baby in Bethlehem was good news for all of humankind, so will be the promised second coming of Christ. The Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour, but that is not something for us to fear. The only thing to fear is that we might get swept up in world events and miss what God is doing right now. Some people interpret Jesus' talk of being taken or being left as a description of the miraculous rescue of Christians that will save them from the violent calamities that everybody else is forced to suffer. But Jesus compares being taken to being swept away by the waters of the flood, which suggests we might prefer to be left behind. We're living in a world where tragedy can strike one person and leave the person standing next to them untouched. Two people were exposed to the coronavirus. One was taken and one was left. Two people went to work at Walmart. One was taken, and one was left. Life is uncertain. of a time when God's will for the whole human race 
would be realized. A day is coming when everyone on earth will look to God for instruction and for guidance. This is good news. Isaiah doesn't threaten that God will judge the nations. He says that God will judge between their competing claims and arbitrate for many peoples. This is good news. The nations of the earth will bring their desire and hunger, their need and hurt, their greed and their grievances, and submit all of them to the authority of a God who is able to make peace, bridge division, and resolve conflict. Warfare and violence will be things of the past. This is very good news. All of the ingenuity and expense that we pour into crafting weapons of war will instead be invested in providing abundant food for hungry people. Our swords will be beaten into plowshares. Isaiah isn't predicting a future that is carved in stone. He's sharing with us God's hopes and God's dreams for our future so that we can start getting excited about them. One of his prophetic disciples would then write about an anointed one, a Messiah, who would come to usher in God's reign of justice and peace. Jesus fulfilled some, but not all, of people's messianic expectations. And the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke each include a scene near the end of Jesus' earthly life and ministry in which he speaks about departing from and returning to our troubled world. He says some things that suggest this return is going to happen very, very soon. He says it launches against us. We need to put on our defensive armor of light, clothing ourselves with our true Christian identity. This identity was given to us when Jesus died for us. We will experience it fully when Christ returns, and in the meantime, we are being transformed into what we can be. then that is the faith I invite you to confess using the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Let us pray to God for a world in need. God of all, your children cry out for mercy. Awaken us to the urgent needs of our time. Help us break down barriers to unite in your redemptive and healing work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of one, the earth's and abundance. As you're able to do so, I invite you to stand to join in the offering prayer that is printed in the bulletin. Eternal God, you made the desert to move and sent springs of water into thirsty ground. Receive our gifts and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice.
If you are staying in your places, though, get out that communion kit, find the bread that side and peel back the lid on it. It is the body of Christ given for you. And turn the kit over, peel back the cover on the other side. It is the blood of Christ shed for you. Those of you who are going to come forward will come from both sides of the aisle, forming a single line coming up to me. When you get to me, you will do one of two things. You will take a kit from this tray, or you will hold out your hands to me, and I'll put a little bit of bread in it. Then you'll take the bread to one of the communion assistants. The metal chalice has wine in it. The glass chalice has juice in it. You will dip your bread into one of those before you eat it. Regardless of whether you come up here and get a kit or get bread, you can then stay at the rail, standing or kneeling for a time of prayer, if that's what you want to do, before going back to your seats. Can I pray? Who's first? The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
As you're able to do so, as it is easy to do so, I invite you to stand to receive God's blessing. God, the eternal Word, who dwells with us in Jesus and holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.